I have spent a lifetime involved in the arts. I started with lessons in dance and fine arts as a young child, and I continued through high school and college and later in studios in New York City. I had a dance career in New York City for about 20 years before I moved here to Stroudsburg 24 years ago. After moving here, I formed a local dance company called the Dance and Paper Theater, because we do origami, <laughs> and the School of Visual and Performing Arts. Um, both are nonprofit organizations dedicated to exposing, educating, and inspiring the public in the arts. I have received many Pennsylvania Partners in the Arts uh, awards for grants for my pr productions in dance and theater. Also with productions using local musicians, composers, and singers. A philosopher who was born about 1,814 years ago influenced the topic of my talk with these words, the power of the arts builds, unbuilds, and rebuilds. I will give you the full quote later. But to begin with, let's journey back to the last ice age. People were still dwelling in caves. They were hunters and gatherers, using stones, sticks, antlers, and other found objects. This mural was painted during the last ice age, about 18,000 years ago. It's from a cave in France and there are many other cave uh, murals in France and Spain that are even thousands of years older than this. What a colossal undertaking that must have been. Imagine if I ask you to paint a mural of wild animals on the walls and the ceiling. First, you'd have to have the technique, then you have to have the materials. During the Ice Age, that meant you would have to find and gather materials to make paint pigment. You would have to gather materials to make a fire and to keep it going. The caves were pitch dark and cold. You would have to rig scaffolding, find materials to do that. You would also have to paint from your mind's eye because they didn't have cell phones back then with cameras. So you would have to remember or imagine what you had seen because they were wild animals. So in other words, you would need a whole crew working on these murals. So I was wondering, why is it so important to have these murals, which meant less people were available to forage for food? Why didn't they all just focus on hunting and gathering food? Here's the answer. This shows the evolution of skulls of Homo sapiens, or modern humans, over millions of years. Not only did our brains grow larger, but the shape and function evolved as well. We evolved into beings with the ability for creative thinking, creative problem solving, and for creating objects. We developed the ability to create art and to appreciate art. Having that ability is part of who we are as humans, which is just as important as our bones, muscles, organs, and everything else that makes us who we are. And having the ability to be creative is how we survived to this day. Objects of art, such as pottery, instruments, jewelry, and figurines, were found around the world dating back more than 30 and 40,000 years ago. <clears throat> so it is no wonder there were already master artists living during the last ice age, a mere 18,000 years ago, painting murals in caves. It is thought that these caves could have been used as temples where rituals were performed connecting them to the spirit world, or used to instruct better ways for hunting, or as a record of the plants and animals to become familiar with in that area. The community gathered, danced, sang, made music and told stories, which was vitally important for their survival, improving their skills for communicating, hunting, and gathering. <clears throat> Poetry was another ancient art form. Often stories which contained vital information for survival were told as poems to make them easier to remember, to pass down from one generation to the next. 
One of the oldest written poems discovered so far is a prayer to the beer goddess. It is a prayer and a recipe, how to make beer, which was one of the first beverages we made at least 4,000 years ago. And it was considered a health drink from the gods. I might add it was the women's job to make the beer. <clears throat> The prayer recipe was most likely passed down as a song or a chant for thousands of years before writing was developed. The power of art. Whole civilizations have been named according to their art. Just one example would be the Phoenicians, which means the purple people. Over 3,000 years ago, they developed a technique in dyeing textiles purple, which stained their skin purple. Their purple fabric was valuable and used for uh, royalty, which is an example of the importance of art and the importance of art appreciation. Objects of art were traded for food and necessities. The power of art projects can act as a bridge bringing people from different cultures together peacefully. Many years ago, I made a dance that was performed on the Metropolitan Museum of Art Steps in New York City to commemorate the 41st year anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. It was a dance for 50 young children called Life Celebration. I went around the city in the hot summer days to camps and community centers in all different neighborhoods to gather the little kids I needed. One day I went way uptown to a neighborhood I had never been to before, looking for the community center. There was a group of teenage kids, boys and girls, hanging around, listening to music on their big boombox. Back in the day, that's what we had. <laughs> they were Hispanic, and they looked at me as if I were in the wrong neighborhood, like I got off the subway at the wrong stop. I was a little nervous, but I went up to them anyway, and I asked, do you want to be in a show? They were ecstatic. They were so excited to be in a show. They spent their whole summer rehearsing with me, and they were a big help. They were holding murals for me and in, in charge of the music. Even some of their families became involved. All 50 kids never even noticed we were all from different ethnic backgrounds. The focus point was the dance and the message of the dance, world peace. Our building at 554 Main Street in Stroudsburg with five spacious studios, a box theater and gallery, houses my dance company and the School of Visual and Performing Arts. It has other dance uh, companies and art companies and artists as well, and theater companies. The programs there have been bringing people from different cultures and arts from around the world together for the past 18 years. We have had classes, workshops, shows, and uh, performances in acting, aerial, aerobics, African dance, African drumming, Argentine tango, ballet dance from India, ballet, ballroom, belly dance, bookmaking, capoeira, contemporary dance, creative dance, drawing, fencing, hip hop, hip hop in heels, Irish step, jazz dance, jazz music, karate, kung fu, mask making, meditation, modern dance, musical theater, Native American dance circle, origami, painting, <gasps> poetry, point, puppet making and puppet shows, salsa, sculpture, songwriting, pilates, tai chi, tap, taekwondo, theater, tumbling, voice, and zumba. We have programs and classes for all ages, from preschoolers to senior citizens, and programs for all levels, from total beginners to professionals. There are work-study scholarships available for people who can't afford classes. We are known for our spacious studios, friendly atmosphere, and professionalism. We have had teachers from Broadway shows, Cirque du Soleil, Metropolitan Opera, New York City, and New Jersey dance companies. Some students and teachers even drive an hour and a half every week to our programs and classes. Several local theater companies use SVPA studios to rehearse in, and so do out-of-state companies when passing through. 
By bringing these groups to town, the arts programs in our building have helped other businesses on Main Street. But more importantly, and I can't stress enough, the benefits that the people have had over the years taking these classes. Over the years, we have served as a refuge to many confused teens who didn't fit in with society. Our programs have helped them to get on the right track and to blossom. Kids with attention and social problems have benefited. Adults and seniors learned new skills and made friends, not to mention these health benefits, improved memory, balance, flexibility, strength, endurance, reduced stress, and increased energy. Some of my students have gone on to have careers in the field of dance. In the year 2010, I celebrated 50 years of dancing. For that occasion, I created Dancing with Cranes, a full evening length dance inspired by the story 1,000 Cranes. This dance about world peace had a cast of 70, including dance and music forms from Africa, Argentina, Ireland, Sweden, and Puerto Rico, and included non-dancers from the high school track team, African drummers, and hundreds of origami cranes. Just before the show started, I was presented with a certificate from the state of Pennsylvania honoring my contribution of arts to the community. The power of art can transform a whole community. Many years ago, when I first started rehearsing in loft spaces in New York City, in Soho, it was a ghost town on Sundays, just newspapers flying around and me walking to rehearsal. <laughs> That neighborhood was nothing more than blocks of warehouses. But as more and more artists started using those buildings as studios, theaters, and galleries, that area became popular and chic. Now, if you go there any day of the week, the sidewalks are crowded and lined with stores and restaurants and galleries. The same thing happened in the meatpacking district and other neighborhoods, too. The power of art is profound. A simple painting compels thousands of people around the world to travel to Paris. I've been to the Louvre Museum twice to see the Mona Lisa. It's not very large, and I don't know why hundreds of people cluster around every day to, to get a view of that painting. But it does have a mysterious, unexplainable power that draws people in. The power of music stirs up emotions and feelings. Recently, I attended a concert, and when Danny Boy was sung, there was hardly a dry eye in the audience. Music can calm you enough to put you to sleep, or it can make your adrenaline race through your body and prepare you for competition or war. Scary movies wouldn't be half as scary without the background music playing. Music can make you feel like dancing, like we just saw. <laughs> The music of Beethoven moves me and touches me deeply, which I can't explain with words. Other performing arts also evoke emotions and feelings. Seeing a play, a movie, a dance show, or an opera, it can make you burst out laughing or burst out crying. It can pull on your heartstrings or it can stir up anger. There is a sculpture that evokes such a strong feeling of hope it makes people cry. After our Civil War, a group of intellectuals in Paris had an idea to give a present to the United States, a sculpture to represent freedom and hope. It turned into a huge undertaking between both countries, and about 20 years later, it was unveiled in 1886. The artist patterned his sculpture after the goddess Lupertas, the Roman personification of freedom the Statue of Liberty enlightening the world. There is a saying most of you are familiar with, use it or lose it. I believe it is just as important to keep your creative potential active as it is to be fit physically. We have evolved into creative beings and that is what has kept us alive. It will be detrimental to our survival if we lose the power of the arts. It is up to you to understand this and to make sure the art programs are not cut from schools by politicians and board members 
who don't see the value of the creative mind. It is up to you to not buy stuff for presents that only end up in landfills, but instead invest in classes in the arts or see a show that's inspiring. It is up to you to turn some of these large empty buildings in town into museums. Imagine how many people would come to town if we had a children's museum. Tell the naysayers the power of the arts transforms the individual and the community. I will end with the full quote from the third century philosopher Plotinus, which by the way I copied from the Capitol building in Harrisburg, a beautiful work of art itself. Art deals with things forever incapable of definition that belong to love, beauty, joy, and worship, the shapes, powers, and glory of which are forever building, unbuilding, and rebuilding in each person's soul and in the soul of the whole world. Thank you.